Hi and welcome back. Today I have another watercolor review video for you and today I'm using the Kwaiomai, Kwai, Kwaiomai, um, it's hard to pronounce that right, I think, uh, the watercolors from Paul Rubens, which are their student grade watercolors. And as always, you get a little uh, paper that gives you some information and these paints come in 24 colors with 12 milliliters tube. There is no swatch chart in this packaging, but you get all the information regarding the colors which pigments are in, if they are light, fast or not, are on the are on the tubes. And there is also a little sign that shows you if the color is more transparent or more opaque. And here you see me just getting something of each paint out onto a piece of watercolor paper. And then we are going to swatch these paints. After color swatching, I will paint an abstract mixed media piece, including these watercolors and some other materials. And if you just want to see that, there is um, the, the timestamps are in the video at the bottom of the description. I'm starting with the white and I will go through all the colors. Um, it's a good mixture. I think some are quite similar, like the cadmium yellow is here. Um, important is that you have all the warm and cool tones of each color to make mixtures. This is Gamboge and I love this. It's a super pretty color. I feel also you don't need the, that many reds. I think it's not that important. You have an alizarin crimson, you have a cool red to mix violets. You also have a purple like this in the palette. Um, you have the standard blues. It's the cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine and an um, intense blue, which I would say could be like a Prussian blue. And you have an indigo, what I really like. Um, you have also some greens, the sap green, which um, looks a bit like a may green to me. A hocus green light and an emerald green. But I think with, with these colors you can mix um, also nice olive because there is no olive in this packaging. Um, you have a burnt sienna, a raw umber, a burnt umber and a van dyke brown and of course a black. I have this little tiny tin here that I recently got and I thought I would fill it with these paints and then I can take it on location for sketching and I think it's perfect because there are 24 super tiny areas for the paints and I have 24 paints um, in that packaging. What I didn't know when I recorded this video was that um, from these watercolors there is also a paint palette well, uh, a watercolor palette with these paint paints in pens um, which is really amazing for traveling obviously it's bigger than this one quite a lot bigger but it's very compact and it has a really nice um, feel and size and I got this um, as a little new year's gift from Paul Rubens so um, I will definitely use it in the future in any of my videos but I haven't used them so far but it's quite nice to have the same colors um, in a pen and a tube and I can always refill them once they run out but I think this tiny one is also quite lovely. For the abstract original page I'm going to do I use this painting from David Hockney as an inspiration not uh, the motif but the composition and that's a really nice technique that you can use um, just looking what you have with a painting that you like from an artist and then um, 
transforming the areas to the um, to your art to your paper whatever you're using and I just lay it aside so I, I can have a look at it and um, always reference the composition and I'm starting out with also a product from Paul Rubens and I got these some years ago these are their metallic oil pastels and of course I will link up all the products I'm using here in the video description and you will also find a discount code um, from Paul Rubens in the description. I have put together a color palette that I really like and I'm just putting some of the paints onto a ceramic palette so I can mix them easily. I wanted to start with the oil pastel because it is um, not water soluble so you get a resist effect and I just had a look which color I wanted to use and I'm picking that orange which matches the color palette I have just put together for the painting and what I'm doing I'm just making some scribbly marks on my page and I'm a little bit defining the composition that um, I have in that reference painting I am using. Now I'm going in with the watercolors and I use them super intuitively. I just play with the brush. I'm using a lot of water. I make abstract shapes and I try to um, just recreate that composition from the original painting. It's always a nice idea if you um, don't have um, a specific composition in mind you just can maybe borrow the composition from some artwork that you are enjoying and that looks pleasing to you. I'm keeping this video in real time so you have um, the chance to paint along with me. I'm enjoying this abstract process a lot. It's very relaxing. I don't really care about the about what I'm doing. I just do it. I just decide that I like something here or there and like to mix this color with the other and that's what I think is quite nice.
I personally like a white watercolor because I like pastel -y watercolors, which are more like a gouache, I would say. And here I mixed, I think it's the burnt sienna, with the white to get kind of a peachy, opaque, more opaque color. It always depends a little bit on the paper if you can layer watercolors easy or not and I'm using a moleskin journal because I have it. I will not buy this one again I think because I'm absolutely not happy with the paper. Um, once it was dry it never becomes flat again and also the the paints reactivate super easily on this paper so I would not recommend it for watercoloring and for sketching they have a better uh, a journal uh, not the watercolor paper the sketching paper is quite lovely um, and but I have to use this journal so I'm using it and once it f it's full I will not repurchase the watercolor book I think also for mixed media it's a bit too not good enough because of the of the warping of the paper and that it does not get flat again um, I just don't like that this should be the gamboche that I'm using here which is quite similar to an crinacridone gold which is a color I use quite often in my work because it's so transparent and such a beautiful orangey warm tone and combined with turquoise or blue it mixes the most beautiful greenish colors and here you can see what the problem with the paper is you get these um, um, these areas where the where the water sits and these puddles and you always have to take care a little about that so yeah As I told you, I'm using mixed media today and I am having also a Paul Rubens product here, which are the normal oil pastels. They are super creamy. I already made a review video on those. And I just used them to make some marks on my page. And that's also um, a reason I would not cover the left side because I used oil pastels on this page. So. Um, it's also a reason if I would have something on the other side, I would just lay a piece of transparent tracing paper in between the pages so they are protected from each other. I just make some marks and I really like how creamy these oil pastels are and how opaque. I did not add much, but just some to have more interest on the page. And now I'm going in and I'm painting in a botanical um, as kind of my focal image for this painting. And what I've done here, I have mixed kind of a very dark turquoisey color with the colors from the set. Finally, I would say these watercolors are really nice. They are very good student grade quality watercolors and I would definitely recommend getting them especially if you are starting out and wanted to try out water tube watercolors instead of pens and it might also be a really ni nice gift for someone who thinks about getting started with watercolors. I'm sharing 
I finished spread at the end of this video so you can see the finished painting and of course I will also share it over on my Instagram page. I hope you enjoyed this little painting video and I wish you a lovely rest of the week. Bye!